Hello everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and today I thought that we would have a go at making Bramble the Bear from the Luna Lapin range by Sarah Peel of Cool Crafting. Now Bramble is a teddy bear that's made in a boucle fabric um, and Bramble is actually unisex so if we have a look in the front, oh drop the pattern, front cover we've got Bramble there in the um, Collector's Pinafore, just forgetting what it was called then. Collector's Pinafore, looking very sweet and lovely as a little girl. And then on the back cover, we've got her dressed in the Meadow Sweet two-piece suit here. Again, which is for the bigger, bigger characters. So, and again, dressed as a boy. So you can take your pick. So we're gonna make today the, 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 the generic bear. It is based on Eric the Polar Bear as well. So if you've already made Eric, then you may already know how to make um, Bramble anyway, it's just slightly bigger. But if not, then Bramble is the bigger version of Eric the Polar Bear. So just depends which ones you've had a go at making um, in the past. Um, you do need to buy the pattern and the pattern I bought from Cool Crafting. I bought the paper pattern because I wanted it all together, but you can also get on a PDF version. So those friends of ours who are overseas such as I'm in, in um, Spain. I know we have a lot of people in America and Australia um, and Europe that, that would like to watch me as well. So you will need to buy the pattern. So you can buy it as a PDF if you want to directly from Cool Crafting. And that's at www.coolcrafting.co.uk. So I'll put it up here for you so that you've got access to that. Um, so that was the pattern. And at the time of purchase, the pattern in a paper pattern format um, from Cool Crafting was £12 for me. And that's in June 2023 that we're in still. <laughs> as last, last count anyway that we are. Um, and in here we've got all of the pattern and all of the instructions. The pattern is on the, the separate sheets that dropped on my floor when I opened the booklet. So let me just get the fabric together and we'll have a look at the fabric that we're going to be using for making Bramble. So I'm just popping back on because I want to say a really big thank you to Aileen Abercrombie, to Sharon Warren and to Jan Franklin because all three of you lovely ladies sent me a coffee and I used your coffee money to buy the boucle um, and the pattern for Bramble. So I want to say a really big thank you both on behalf of myself and behalf of everybody who watches this video for the head to say thank you very much for your kindness and your generosity because that helps me keep making my videos. Um, so I hope you approve of Bramble's head. The body and the limbs will follow shortly. So I chose to go for the biscuit colourway, which is this one just here, which is this lovely um, light brown top. And as you can see, there's a lovely curly texture to that fabric there, really nice. There is some give, both in, in the straight of grain and more so in the cross grain. So we're gonna to have to be careful with that just to make sure that bamboo doesn't stretch too, too much for us or get too tall, um, because we'll need to just control that stretch um, with our um, stuffing because obviously we just want to be aware of that. The other thing that I'm curious to find out as well is that I have heard that some of the Meadow Sweet clothes are a little bit tight on the underarms and on the sleeves. So again, this is why I'm making my bramble so that I can have a look at that. And then if there are, we'll do a future video on how to fit the Meadow Sweet clothes just to give a bit more extra room if you need it for, for your characters. But that's the biscuit colourway. I think there's a darker one as well. And then I also picked up the contrast, which is the snow colourway. It's whiting out a bit on the screen with all the lights, but hopefully you can see that that's very, very similar in terms of the actual um, texture of the two of those. Um, now, I didn't buy a kit for Eric because in some ways, I think it's fairly simple in terms of the haberdashery that's needed. So what I chose to do instead was to buy two half metres, so that's the 50 centimetres across here, by the width of the fabric, which is right out here. Because I'm hopeful that actually I can get more than one bear out of my half meter. And obviously once we start to put the fabric on here, we'll have a look and we'll see how much we've, we've got spare and whether that's the case. I am going to do the contrast as well, I think, on the bear. Um, if you look at the inside of the ears and the nose. Um, I know it's got a feet pad, but I think my, I might do my feet pad, pads, feet pads, get my words right brown as well though because I kind of like that look um, and I might have a quick look online and just see um, if I prefer them all one colour. 
this is the thing when you when you're making it up as you go along and you're doing your own thing you can have whatever you like you want an all brown bear you can have an all brown bear if you want your white polar bear you can have your white polar bear um i'm going to stick with the black little nose on the on the um character and i've got some little black beaded buttons for um the eyes and then from my stash i've got some buttons for um arms and leg attachment anyway so i think that oh pattern keeps falling out um so i think that overall i'm i didn't feel that a, a um kit was necessary however if you've bought a kit then that's up to that's absolutely your choice i'll say up to you then but it sounds a bit rude doesn't it but it's absolutely your choice is what i'm saying but in this case this um boucle fabric was eight um pounds for half a meter so it's 16 pounds a meter but as you can see i've that's doubled over i've got all of that and we'll have a look and see how we get on with that when we start cutting it out and I also bought the half meter and the contrast as well but look at this stretch we're gonna have to be really careful with that aren't we it's got a knitted back to it so it's it, it's robust enough it's it's strong enough it's not um, looking as if it's going to um, pop open or anything like that but it's just something to bear in mind when we are stuffing and that could be one of the reasons why the arms do tend to grow on you as well and also if we don't get that that direction of the stretch the right way then it's going to um go a bit long his legs are going to get longer and longer and longer all the time his hers their legs are going to get longer and longer so let's um let's have a waffle sorry one of those days i've got a lot to do so in terms of videos to bring to you so we're going to get on with bramble now because that's the next on the list and then we'll just keep on going so please if you haven't subscribed yet and you do like the videos that i make just click on the subscribe button you can click on the notification bell and then you'll be um, up to date with all of my videos as soon as they become live and i know a lot of you bounce straight onto them as soon as they do do become live and that's lovely to hear that you do okay let's get on with making bramble Okay, so just before we get started, you know I mentioned that I might make the bear all in brown or make it all in snow. So what I've just done is I've just popped onto the um, Cool Crafting page on um, group page on Facebook. And there's a little, um, if I can show you, there's a little, um, I think you can see it just there, there's a little magnifying glass. If you click on there, it allows you to search in the group. So you can choose choose whatever you want to type in there. So I'm going to put Bramble in there. And then I'm going to have a look and it says search this group for Bramble. So if you're wanting to make a character, you can always do a quick search in the group and then have a little look and see. So one of my posts has come up for now. Um, but let's have a little look. So there's a Bramble with the white contrast exactly as in the pictures. I'm just seeing if I can see one. Where's one out of tweed? There's one all in blue. Oh my goodness. Now that one looks nice. Okay, so that one's so which character? Who's made that one? By Lisa Ingham. She's made it all in blue. Lovely. Um that's all good. That's a traditional stitched one. Let's have a look. Another one. Oh, that one's um in different fabric. It's in traditional. So I'm just having a quick look through. So you can do your browsing and have a look and see how you want your bramble to look. Um, and if you're looking at any other characters as well, you can have a quick look through the group, but without having to trawl through every single post, you're only seeing the posts that have got the keywords in that you're putting in to have a look at. So I'm just going to have a quick carry on through. I didn't know whether anybody knew how to do that or not. Um, there's one all in brown. Um... Now, I think I'm going to strip traditionally. I'm going to do the one all in one colour. With the contrast, sorry. Um, and do that. So that would look nice, I think. Okay, decision made. So I'm going to do the contrast. So let me get to, um, talking about the pattern and then we'll take it on there. But I just would be useful if you didn't know how to search the group, then um, that would be a, just a quick tip how to do that. So the first thing you want to do is to find your pattern pieces. Now, if you're painting at home, just make sure that you measure your test square to make sure that is two centimetres by two centimetres. Otherwise, you won't be put, um, printing out at the, and cutting out and tracing at the right amount. The thing that I do then is I find my tracing paper and I always keep the master copy of my pattern intact, regardless of whether it's a um, whether it's the dressmaking patterns or whether it's the 
lunar lapping patterns and I'll put some tracing paper over the top. You can see that here. Just get that from an art supply shop or from a, um, not a news agent, just a um, stationery shop. That's what I wanted. Um, and then I will then print off my patterns. Now, I like to cut mine out on the single. Now, especially because this boucle is really quite thick. I do, I personally feel you could try and cut it out um, in a double layer, but for me, I'm going to cut out onto the reverse of the boucle. And in order to do that, I've got to do something called mirroring, mirroring my pattern pieces. So what I do is I have a look at all of my pattern pieces here. And then where it says cut two in main fabric, and that the shape isn't symmetrical, so this is this pattern is like that. I know that I'm going to need one like that and I'm going to need one the other orientation as well so that when I put these together the two eyes are close together and the darts are further away and you need to do that because when you cut it in the, on the double and you put your pattern piece onto your fabric you will automatically because there's a right side and a wrong side to the boucle you will automatically get a left and a right when you cut them out on the double but because I'm cutting mine out on the single and if you're trying to keep an eye on your fabric as well and not and make as economical use as that as possible then you need to make sure that you have got a left and a right when you start to cut these out so I hope that makes sense I've done some um, other videos on mirroring your pattern pieces and I know I've spoken about it quite a lot of times on my channel anyway so all I'm going to do is just take these pattern pieces of oh, that one more thing as well the other thing that I would suggest is that when you are cutting out your fabric you look at something called dogs and dogs is the direction of greatest stretch I'll just pop it up here so you can see it so basically I'm going to give my fabric a stretch this way so the selvage is down here that's the bound edge with the holes in so that's the across ways and then that way and I can see that my direction of greatest stretch is going across the width of the fabric not up and down the fabric so i am going to choose to put all of my pattern pieces in the same direction so i'm going to use them going all the way across so i get more width rather than more lengths so if we talk about it on a on a leg piece if you have your direction of greatest stretch going along the leg and you start to stuff it your leg will get longer and longer and longer along here because you'll be pushing into it and pushing the stuffing in and it'll get longer. If we have the direction of greatest stretch going across the um, pattern piece, then your leg might get fatter, but it won't get longer. And I already think that Bamboo's got long enough legs as it is. So I'm, I'm going to just put my direction of greatest stretch. It's the same if you were making leggings for a child or for it for an adult. You'd always want your leggings to give more on the width than you do on the length because otherwise they'll be off the end of your feet but you won't have enough room for your thighs. So just, just remember it like that if you can do. Okay, so I'm going to put these pattern pieces on here, trying to keep them as straight as I can do. And I'm going to use pins to put this on. Now the other thing that I have done is where it says to cut four legs, I always cut out the full number of pattern pieces that I need. I trace it off and I cut those out. But again, with the legs and with the arms, they are not a symmetrical pattern piece. So you need to make sure that you've got your correct number of left and right. So there's a headpiece onto our fabric and I'm going to put the other one right up against it. And I can go right up to the edges of my fabric because this boucle doesn't really fray which is good for us, so that will be good and nice and stable to sew with. We also need to just be aware of when we are sewing with this boucle because it is quite thick for going under your machine. And what you might find beneficial if you've got one is a to use a walking foot. So we'll talk more about a walking foot shortly when I get the machine set up. But for now, I'm just going to start and put all my pattern pieces on for our bramble here so I, tr I tried various different layouts to try and get this all right and to make sure that we get as much as we can do we can alternate the pattern pieces up and down but I will keep them all going ideally north to south 
but you can do south to north if you need to. I wouldn't have one tummy piece going down along the edge of my selvage here and then have the other one going across because we're not using felt. So we just need to be aware of that because felt has different properties to the boot play. It's making a bit more room. So felt doesn't have a direction, you can use that anyway. But when we're working with the boot play here, we need to just make sure that we have got the right direction. Pop that one out of the way for a second or two, and then let's get this across here. Oh, you can see better there, look, a lot better. Okay, so let me just carry on with making some of these. There is a recommended layout in your pattern as well, so if you want to, you can follow that. I tend to go free, free form on mine, but obviously you can follow the pattern should you wish. So let's, let's identify what our contrast bits are. Tails in brown, so that's fine, ear one. That's ear two. We're going to lose our little nose bit if we're not careful. So ear one and ear two can be on here. That's fine, they're in brown. right up against each other and if you're if you're familiar with cutting out then jump ahead to the next section I've chaptered the video for you so you can move ahead and go back as many times as you want and that makes it easier for some people doesn't it just to follow along and to see what's happening Put the tear in there so again it's just a bit like a jigsaw a fabric jigsaw puzzle you're just trying to fit things in and get them as close fitting as you can do for when you're cutting out you don't need to leave a big gap because all of these pattern pieces have got seam allowance on them anyway because bramble is designed to be machine sewn anyway so we can we can work with that i've got more pattern pieces than you've got because remember there are two tummy you need to cut two tummy pieces out so i've got two tummy pattern pieces but if you're cutting yours out on the double you'll only have one tummy pattern piece that you will then cut out but again I have mirrored these so that they will be cut out straight or the right orientation for us to put together. Okay so I've just finished um, pinning all of my pattern pieces onto my fabric and I've got my two head pieces at the top here. I've got two ear pieces over here. I've got a tail piece there and a tail piece here. Two feet pads because I'm doing the feet pads in the same colour as the um, as the legs. One pair of legs is just here. The other pair of legs is over here. Two tummy pieces, the head gusset, two arms there, a third arm there, and I couldn't quite fit the fourth arm there with keeping it straight, so I've had to put it over here. But I'm happy about that, that's fine. And I've just got under just over let me just have a look and just see where we are that's our fold line there so that arm and the edge of that foot is just going into the other half meter of fabric so with some careful pinning you could possibly get two brambles almost out of one meter under out of a half meter of fabric um, so it's just it's just trying to do your jiggery pokery around to try and get them all in at the best um, way possible. And, and you might look at this and there might be a, a glaringly obvious way of doing this slightly differently. Um, in, and if you've got more time, then play around with the layout. You know, use all your little gaps for your little pieces. You know, like I've squeezed a little tail in just there, just because we've got room. Um, and just see what you can actually do to keep all of these together and um, unfortunately I just couldn't quite fit that other arm in which is the one that's just gone over into the extra half meter um, but we're not far off and it may be on another one we can do that you know all the tummy ends up being a different color because you decided it's not going to be seen if you're trying to squeeze as much as possible out if you're not then don't worry um, so what I'm going to do now is going to cut these out on the single just make sure you've got all of your pattern pieces you've got you need four legs four arms, two tummies, two heads, two feet pads, two ears and two tails. And then we've still got, I've got them pinned onto my um, 
pincushion here, two ears in contrast and the muzzle in contrast. So I'm going to do those in a minute. One way you could work with these is you could now draw around them if you wanted to in a Frixion pen just to take, take that off or you can just cut directly round with using your scissors, whatever you prefer. But the next thing then is to take, to cut out all of your pattern pieces from your fabric. Okay, so here's all of my pieces all now cut out. Remember, I've cut mine singly, so it may look like there's more um, in my pile than there is in yours. What I've done is, because I'm hopeful to get another bramble bear out of my boucle, I know I keep going on about this, um, but I've saved some of the bigger scraps because I think I'll be able to get maybe an ear out of some of the bigger scraps. So I'm going to save those just in case that makes all the difference to me making um, a second one but then the smaller scraps are going to keep to one side because I'll use those as stuffing within the tummy as well because we might, I wouldn't throw those away because then it'll take up some room that you would other be wise be using with bought stuffing. The next thing then is to take our pattern pieces then for the muzzle and also for the ears, the contrast ears, and we're going to pop those onto our fabric. Now, the muzzle actually fits onto the nose on this way, so we need to make sure that our direction of greatest stretch is going um, down. So I'm going to fold our fabric against the selvage edge, put the fold edge of the pattern piece up against the folded edge, and this one I am going to cut on the on the double and just see how that compares. It was really easy to cut it out the fabric on the on the single, um, and that worked really well. But let's just have a go at this and just see how this is for you as well, because I've got a direct contrast then, haven't I, to do that? And I think that I'll be able to squeeze an ear in by the side. Just be careful that with your pins, you're not distorting your 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 pattern piece at all, because that will impact on your final character. Just have a little look, see how that will fit in. I think that one will be best. And because I've cut it, cutting this one out on the double, I don't need to cut out both pattern pieces. I'm, I'm going on to just one, so that will give me two in one go. So that's my, on my, my little piece of white that I need just for the contrast pieces for that. So I get that cut out and then next we'll be ready to talk about sewing. Um, there is one thing that I did think about and that's for people who li don't live within a um, within the UK so you, you don't buy your supplies from Cool Crafting. I have seen people go to um, thrift shops or charity shops and purchase um, a wool coat um, maybe with a bit of texture or a bit of a um, this kind of loopy kind of texture and they've made brambles very successfully out of that so obviously that's another option for you if you wanted to have a go at making a bramble but you weren't sure about your fabric or where you could get something like this boucle from then you could go to a thrift shop and, and just buy a, a wool coat that you want something with a bit of fluff to it and a bit of texture to it I would suggest to, to, to make um your bramble as lovely as possible but that's that's a good suggestion for you as well okay let me get this cut out and then we'll be ready okay so we've got all of our pieces cut out i definitely preferred cutting it out on the single i do think that that gives you a better finished edge um, if you cut it out on the single but the choice is yours okay so the next thing that we're going to do now is we are going to start to mark the positions of the notches and also any dots that we've got onto our fabric from our pattern pieces and there's there's a couple of ways that you can do this the way that I usually like to do to if I'm working with felt is to take my snips and then where we, so like on the foot pads we've got a um a notch at the bottom and at the top of the foot pad here the heel and toe and then you would snip just a few millimeters into your pattern now because into pattern piece and through your fabric but because this is quite a thick fabric and it's quite bulky and also it's got that stretch I think those marks could get lost um, apologies for the noise outside and um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, what's called a Frixion pen which is a heat erasable pen this one's got um, erasable gel on it and I'm just going to use that just to do a little pen mark because this fabric is so thick then you're not going to see those marks on the outside because it's not going to go through the fabric but it'll just be a little bit more noticeable I think for me rather than using my notches which I would be doing if I was on felt so if you're in using a fabric that isn't very 
doesn't want to mark for me. If you're using a fabric that isn't very um, fluffy, like unlike this one, then go ahead and use um, your snips just to make a little mark. And also just use the nose of your snips. Don't don't ram your scissors in like that over your fabric because if you nudge yourself or you, it takes a bit more effort, you run the risk of ruining your fabric piece. So just use the nose of your scissors and just do your little snip if you're going to do that. This pen just needs to get the ink running properly. And then I'm going to mark all of these. I also mark the ends of my darts in the same way rather than a snip on this fabric and then we'll also be doing a tailor's tack on the little dot there and the one for the eye so go ahead and have a look through all of your pattern pieces now on the muzzle i am going to be marking the halfway point on the muzzle as well because that's a part that we need to be aware of as well but it hasn't got a notch on it so i've just got a little mark on my fabric like that nothing on the ears nothing on the tail marks that head there are marks on the legs as well well the other thing I didn't say as well was I pinned my pattern pieces onto the wrong side of my um boucle fabric because so I do think that that made it easier for my for me to be able to cut out and and pin those on rather than pin it onto the very very fluffy side so that was just another little thing that I noticed but the pieces where you've got a little cross like this, or you've got your dot for that or for your eye, then we're going to keep those on a separate pile because they need to have a tailor's tack put on them. And then I'll come back and show you how to do a tailor's tack. Okay, so once you've marked all of your notches, you're going to take a needle. Use quite a thick one because you'd, this boucle is quite thick. And you're going to thread it, if you can. And you're going to thread it with a length of contrast thread. Now, I always try to use a colour that I've not got in my design. So if you've got a patterned fabric, then I'd always try and choose a colour that isn't in the pattern fabric already. You want it double, but you don't want any knot in the end. So you just want it loose at the end. And let's start here first. So we have a dot at the end of the leg dart on the body part. So we're going to take a stitch, we're going to go in through our fabric, make sure you come through the other side, you want to be able to see your mark on the other side. So if you can see the silver of your needle, then you can see your thread when it's through. And we go through there and we leave a tail of about an inch, inch and a half. And that goes north to south and then we go east to west. So you're doing it like the, the numbers on a clock, aren't you? 12, 3, 6 and 9 and you leave an, a tail about the same same length as your loop, the same length as your tails. And then you're going to use your snips, wherever we've put those, they're here. And we're going to leave another tail as well. So this is what we do. And then we snip through the loop, and that gives us a little tuft of threads that's that side. And if we look this side, we can see our mark. It's not very clear in the fabric, so you know, just be aware of that. And if you take too small a bite of your fabric, you won't be able to see your tailor's tack at all on the back of your, um, on, on the right side of your fabric. So if you think this is for the, so if we're going next, what we're going to do is for the leg, then if you put a position on the edge of the leg, but you can't see it through from this side, we'd, we need that uh, mark when we're actually going to, after the body's been stuffed. So we need to make sure that that's visible. So make sure that when you are, doing your positioning you take a decent sized chunk so like on this leg one i'm going to take a bigger a bigger um stitch so that it's nice and clear and also that di differentiates it from being um the top of the dart as well because you've got two tailors tacks close together there so let's leave a tail you could always use a different color as well as should you wish so there we go, we've got another tailor's tack mark just there. I think you can see that in black. And we've got our two on the front here. So then all you would do is take your pins out of your pattern. And then very carefully, you peel back your pattern piece and hold onto the legs of your tails. And then that will actually mark those two positions exactly right into your fabric. And we know we've got the positions here. So on this, my larger one is for the leg and my smaller one is for the dart. 
So I keep my pattern pieces on, but I take most of my pins out just so that makes it quicker for me later on. And we can see that that pattern piece is all ready to go. I've got a notch marked just here and just here. And then I've got my two tailors tacks marked as well in the separate bits of fabric. So go ahead and just do that same technique to mark all of your dots and all of your leg positions on your pattern pieces and so that it goes through onto your fabric. And then we'll be ready to talk about starting to sew. Now, the one thing that I'm going to do is I do, whilst I cut out all of the shapes and all of the pattern pieces at one go, that's to make sure that we don't start cutting before we know we've got all of our pattern pieces onto our fabric. Today, we had plenty of fabric, so you know you can say that doesn't matter so much, but if you're working with the kits, you've got a limited amount of fabric, so you want to make sure you've got everything all together before you start. So we'll, we've cut out all of the pattern pieces for the body and the limbs and the head. We're, go, we're marking all of those up now, so that's all done. But then as I'm going through them, I will separate out the parts for the head and the parts for the body and the limbs and keep those separate because first we'll do the head, then we'll do the body, and then we'll work on the limbs and go through it that way. Um, and I find that's a really good way to stay organised. So I hope that helps for you too. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk to you about before we move on to actually sewing is about a walking foot. Now, a walking foot looks like this. Ignore my initials on it. That was just because I took it to a workshop with me. Um, but a, a walking foot is quite a clunky looking piece of kit. You've still got your presser foot here where you feed your fabric through. But you've got this mechanism at the back here and you've also got a lever here that moves up and down. Now, the thing with a standard foot, so let's use this foot here as an example, is that it's smooth underneath and you have your feed dogs underneath that feed your fabric with those little triangly bits that you've got under here, just on the bottom of the fabric of the um, machine here. Oh, let me put some light on, hold on one second. So on your feet, on your machine bed just here, when you've taken off your foot, just keep your foot away from the pedal because you've got your needle in still. But under here, you've got some rough bits of metal, oh, excuse my throat, <coughs> um, some rough bits of metal here that actually grab the fabric and then push it along for you as you are sewing, generally speaking. When you're working with thick fabric like this boucle is, is, is really quite thick, if you have just this presser foot here, when you're trying to sew, the fabric on the top layer will move and it'll what's called creep. It won't move through at the same rate as the one that's being gripped from underneath because of that soft, um, smooth underside. It's not soft, it's just smooth underside. So on a walking foot, if you look at this white bit just here, you can see just there, then that's actually some extra feed dogs from the top. So what happens is that when your lever goes up with your needle, the, the um, serrated edge bit here for the feed dogs comes down and then as you go again, it just moves down. So it, it, they grip with the feed dogs underneath and they can move backwards and forwards as well. And, and what happens is it, it means that your fabric is gripped from the top as well as from the bottom. So on thicker fabrics, if you do anything like quilting or you do bag making or you're working with heavyweight fabrics or very fluffy fabrics, or again, very silky fabrics, because again, silky fabrics with an ordinary presser foot, um, they just slide and slip about. But again, it just gives you more grip and more control. They aren't cheap. These ones are about 50 pounds um, per go at the last time I bought my last one. I did, uh, it is a Janome branded one, so I would recommend you get the one branded for your machine. The reason I say that is because I did go ahead and buy a cheaper one thinking it was going to be an economy and within three weeks it had broken. So, and I'm, I'm not overly heavy handed with my machines at all. I do treat them with respect. So I do feel that the you're better off buying the branded walking foot for your machine because I think you'll find it's better made and it'll last longer. So that said, let's just carry on here. So that's a brief introduction to walking feet. You do need to usually undo the um, screw on your presser foot in order to take off the main part of your foot. Keep that safe. And then in order to fit it, you, the lever here needs to go over the top of the little bar that, that 
tightens your needle in. So on my machine, I've got this little bar tack here. If I put something white behind it, hopefully you'll see it. Just there, look. I think you can just see it just in there. Um, I haven't, I've taken the light out of my machine because everything kept whiting out underneath, so I'm hoping that's going to help you see better. So that little lever, I always put that over first, and then I manipulate the little clasp bit so that it goes around the actual um, presser foot stem. I then sight the um, screw, I tighten it as far as it'll go by hand first, and then I'll take my screwdriver and then I'll just tighten that up in there. little bit fiddly and you want it to make sure that it's nice and tight on there so the idea is that as you move your needle up and down with your the um with your hand and with your foot pedal the lever goes up and down because it's over the top of that needle bar and that's what's needed to happen if you don't put that under it'll just jam your machine because it just goes underneath and it won't won't fit in so that's the other thing. Um, so that's how you fit a walking foot ready for going. The other thing that I need to do is choose my fab, my um, colour thread. And I'll have a quick look and see what I've got. I think that one will be about right. Oh, it's a little bit pale actually. Hold on one second. That one's better. That's a little bit darker. And the rule of thumb is that if you have more than, if you have a couple of choices of, of threads to use, and I've got two here that I can show you, because again, I've not bought the kit, so I'm using what I've got in my stash. The darker one will show up less against your fabric than the lighter one. So always go the shade darker if you have to, rather than the shade lighter, because it will, it will over time, it'll be better on your fabric. So I'm going to go with this one. So let me get a bobbin wound up, ready to go. And then we're going to be ready to sew our ears, is where we're going to start with our bramble. So let's get this bobbin sorted out and I'll come back to you. Okay, so when I'm working with a new fabric and this boucle is new to me, what I do is I'll just do a quick test of the fabric. So I've got my stitch set up onto a 2.2, which is a dressmaking stitch. Um, but because these, this fabric is a little bit thicker, I think we're gonna take that up to a three. So let's change our stitch length up to a, up to a length of three because I think that that will give us a better finish but let's have a look and see how we get on so I've got my walking foot onto my machine here and I'm just going to now set this up and do this test um, run of the fabric so I've put my um, fabric under my machine presser foot and let's have a go you'll notice that the um, walking foot is is louder than a ordinary machine and we can just test our tension this way Let's take our fabric out and just have a little look and see what we think. So that's a nice tight little seam there. It's pulling in on the stitches and I'm happy that that's how that's going to be. So just test your stitches. Just make sure that when you put your stitches together and pull it apart, you can't get a gap between your stitches because you might need to either shorten the length of your stitches. Maybe I go down to a 2.8 maybe, hey. Um, and also you want your tension to be right so that it'll hold on to that. We don't want it to bunch up or to pucker as we're sewing, we just want it to be a nice firm seam there. And it, the fabric goes through, the, the needle goes through the fabric really easily, so that's not a concern at all. It's just going to be making sure that because of the thickness that the two sides go through at the same rate. So now that I'm happy that we've got our tension set up, so we've got that all sorted, Find your ear pieces and then we're going to put a contrast and a brown um, pattern piece together for our ears. So there's a brown one and there's a contrast. Right sides together, so match the straight edge and then you want to be putting your pins in to hold those together. Oh, I'm going to go sewing that way, aren't we? So that we can actually sew these together. And then we're going to be sewn with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We're going to start at one straight edge. We're going to reverse stitch and then go all the way around. And then we're going to finish just here. Just make sure that your pieces are edges are matched so that you can hold those together. 
and if you if it doesn't start straight away when you start stitching start a little bit further in then go back to do your reverse stitches and then come forward again and that usually will work um, because with a bulky fabric like this starting at the very edge and trying to go forward can bunch all your fabric up so just start about half a centimeter in do a couple of stitches forward then reverse and you'll find that that should be a lot easier for you the other thing that you can have to hand is and people who follow me know that i use this a lot is an awl which is um a pointy tool like this and you can use that to help manipulate the fabric underneath the presser foot as well okay so i'll get on with them get the other one pinned together and then we'll, we'll do some sewing the other thing that I wanted to say to you as well, just before we start sewing, just looking for my oil oh, that's coming out, is that when we're sewing normally, I suggest that you have your needle on your presser foot. Um, let me just find my presser foot in here. Normally, on the normal presser foot, I say that we have the needle towards the left hand side so we only have a small amount of the presser foot onto the fabric. That's with a smaller amount of fabric. But if you try and do that on this thick fabric, you're going to keep slipping off the edge of the fabric because that's not enough to control it. So we're going to do the opposite. So whereas normally I'll we'll sew like that and we'll just have the small amount of the presser foot on, this time we're going to sew with the majority of the presser foot onto the um, ear pieces or any of these pattern pieces because we want that the weight of that presser foot and the pressure holding it on to guide us around the um, the piece that we're sewing and we want that pressure and that weight to hold all of the layers together. I hope that makes sense to you um, but you'll see as, as we start to go so for now I've moved my needle across to position number seven so 3.5 for me is in the middle zero is across to the left and I've gone position number seven just make sure that your needle's not going to hit your presser foot as it goes down just to make sure but then we're going to start that little half centimeter in from the edge I'm using the outside of my presser foot for being my seam gauge and then we're going to take a couple of stitches forward that's now anchor the threads now we can go back and we've got some tension on what we're doing you can't see but my hand's in the way can you sorry and then we're going to go forward again but I just keep my fingers on the threads here just to give that little bit of tension if we need it as we're going back through again okay and we're off now I'm going to put my needle down into my work so that's now anchored because we're going to pivot this quite a tight curve and we want that edge to be nice and smooth so I'm going to lift up my presser foot leaving my needle in the work and just twist the work just very slightly and take a few more stitches and I can see the fabric bunching up so I lift that presser foot again and twist it just very slightly a few more stitches and take this pin out now because we're we're onto it and we just have to keep doing this pivoting around these small shapes really really carefully and use my awl as well to help just make sure your all edges are staying together and that you're copying this this curve as best as you can do tight curves are the worst but as i say if you just keep stopping and don't just try and do it all in one go you can't push this fabric through your under your presser foot and get a nice curved seam it, ju it just bunch up and it'll just slide against each other let me move this pin out of the way because i think we're on that now and you can see how quickly it just wants to fall off the edge which is why we've got that presser foot just onto that edge so if you see how many times i stop and start then that'll give you a guide as to roughly what how many times you should be stopping, stopping and starting just make sure your fabric's staying underneath neatly and then reverse again at the end needle up and then we can take our threads out and so if I show you this one this is what we're looking for oh threads in the bin so this is what we're looking for we're looking for this I'll perhaps put some more light on for you in a second um, is this lovely smooth curve around the edge here as you can see and that will then give us a nice ear. So now all we're going to do is pop our finger inside. You can tr cut this seam down, but actually I've made one ear already and I quite like the firmness on the edge of that ear. It's kind of giving it a nice rolled shape. So I'm gonna keep that intact. I did do a little practice before I came on camera of the other ear. 
that's the good thing when you've got two things of one you can I can have a little practice can't I and see how it's turning out again just put your finger inside because that boucle has some stretch on it and then when we're ready we just want to make sure that we've got two symmetrical ears so we want them to be the same length and the same width so just put them on top of each other and there we go there we've got our two ears let me just sort out the light for you a little bit better and then i'll come back to you okay so before we move on to the next section what sarah says is to tuck the ears together so that you've got a little bit of the white showing and then she suggests that you then stay stitch this or or tack this in place i think this is going to be easier if we tack this by hand just because it's such a thick piece of fabric and it's so small that we can just do a quick little stitch just leave some ends so you've got something to unpick later and we can just pull that, pull that in with a couple of stitches. Some things are easier done, done by hand than they are on the machine. So there's a nice little ear, quite happy with that. So let me just tack the second one and then we'll talk about fitting that into the head. Okay, so the next thing that we need now is our two head pieces. And I just want to take your attention to this dart down here with the dotted line and then the solid line. If we just move our tailor's tack out of the way just to make sure that that's not going to get snipped because we've got to be brave and we've got to cut along that edge. So if you just take your scissors, make sure your pattern piece is all lined up. I've got mine upside down at the moment, looks so like it's towards me. And then I'm just going to start right on top of that dark line solid line and i'm going to cut down to the end of it and i've just put my snip into my pattern i'm going to do that on both of them but just do make sure that your fabric is lined up with your pattern piece excuse the noise outside it's a beautiful day here in spain so i've got the window open but it does mean that sometimes we get a little bit more noise so make sure that you've got your eye position marked with your tailor's tack and make sure you've got your um, bottom of your dart measured um, positioned with your tailor's tack. And then we can take the pins out of these. Just make sure you don't lose your threads as you take your pattern piece off. And the pattern pieces can go somewhere safe for next time because I'm sure you're going to be wanting to make another bramble. Because it's going to be an adorable creature, I think. Right, okay. And so what we need to do with these, if we put them together so that we keep our orientation correct, so we know that the eye is on the top edge and we've got the nose or the snout going together. This is going to be our neck edge down here. That's the throat and this is the um, snout. And we know that because the darts have to be on this top edge at the top up here. And we're going to take an ear and we're going to put it wrong, um, the contrast side down onto our fabric. Now, you have a choice because this dart is quite big you have a choice whereabouts on this dart your ear goes i have seen some right down at the bottom and that can look quite adorable and i've seen some really close to the top but because we've got to sew onto this line here i'm going to suggest about halfway down would probably be about the best bet so what i'm going to do is just sort of hold my ear in place and then turn over to the wrong side and then I'm going to put a pin now when you're pinning these things through with this thick fabric oh that's my nose um, pattern piece hold on a second I pinned it onto my pin cushion so I wouldn't lose it you don't have to go all the way through so long as you've got some fibers holding that ear in place then you don't need to worry so then let's go on to the other one and we're going to have you're having the the round edge of the eye pointing toward round edge of the ear pointing towards the ear and you've got the contrast side down if you're using that if they're both the same it doesn't matter you just want the inside of the ear down and pointing towards your eye and we're going about halfway down that edge and once you've got the raw edges of your ear against the raw edges of your seam then we're just going to put a pin through in a couple of places just to hold that in place. And as I say, you don't have to go right the way through the ear. You can just go through some of the fibres and that will just hold it in place. So let's pop that down again. Just make sure yours is looking like mine. And then the next thing we're going to do then is fold that dart over the top. And then we're going to match our raw edges at the top here. 
put a pin through. And then I'm going to put a pin through just before that dart. I can get my pins. And going right the way through. So it's kind of going to just grip that ear just in between. Just make sure that it's going to go through your fabric. And then what we're doing with the dart is you're folding it down towards your tailor's tack on the edge there. So when we sew this, we're gonna sew it with quarter inch seam allowance, we're gonna take our time and we're going over this bump here and then we're going to go down towards the dart there. So that's, that's one all ready and pinned. And then we can take, I'll do that one in a second. We'll take this one to the sewing machine. So we will probably need our awl for this. If you've not got an awl, but you've got a quick and pick, then you can always use the point of the quick and pick. Just be careful not to go towards the blade because you need to make sure the little blade is hidden in there, look, right in that little arch area. So as long as you're using the edge and just use it sideways on just to pull your fabric through, you'll be fine. But if you try and go like that, you're gonna put the fabric onto the blade and then cut through it. So you do have to be extra careful if you're doing it that way. Threads to the back. Let's start quarter of a centimetre in again and I've got the majority of my presser foot still on top of my fabric because so that we've got a really big bolt to go across. So I'm going to do a little, let's put the needle in the work first because I've got them straight onto a pin. So let me take that pin out. So I've got my fabric anchored now. A couple of stitches forward and then a couple of stitches back just to anchor that in. And then holding onto my thread so I can pull pull the fibres through again, take a few small stitches forward again. This is a time to go slow, so if you've got a speed control on your machine, turn it down and have your all ready, because again, with your all, you can press down the fibres, if you can see how they go down, and that will make it easier for you to get over your um, bulk. So let's go again, let's just move it, keep your foot, your, um, Keep your awl out of the way of your needle. Just wanting to get stuck a little bit. So again, just press it down. This is probably going to be one of the bulkiest parts because we think we've got two layers of the two layers of the ears plus the bit that we've kind of crossed it down the side, and then two edges there. So it's quite a thick section. Once you start to get halfway down the dart you now need to start and be aiming your presser foot towards the tailor's tack that you did and towards that mark so if you need to leave your needle in the work and just pivot slightly then you can do but i would wait until you're on your ear to do that and then i am going to reverse at the end of my dart because i want this to be nice and firm but normally we wouldn't reverse on the end of a dart if you were dressmaking you would never reverse so I've kind of got a bit of a, a wavy kind of um, dart there, as you can see. But if I open that out, we've got a nice bit of shape to the head. We've got nice clearance at the top so that we can get that ear out the way for sewing around the head. And hopefully that's going to be a good position because that dart is going to give a nice bit of shape to um, the head of Bramble. So, cut off my starting threads. I'm going to find the end, I'm going to take, oh, take my tailor's tacks out now because we've finished with that now. And if they don't want to pull out straight away, just take off some of the, the thread, just down low, down by the start, and then your fibres will just then pull, pull out again quite nice and easily. Just give those a little tug and they should, it just means that the, the um, machine's gone through the, gone through the fibres. And you can have a look on the other side and take out anything that you can see if you've got any fibres left on the other side. Okay, so now I'm going to take these two ends here and I'm going to knot them because that's what we would normally do at the end of a dart. So we might as well just do that. So I'm just going to knot these three times. And if you struggle to knot them, use, use the end of your awl or your quick and pick because you can put your end of your awl through the not through the hole through the circle you made with the threads when you cross them over and then just pull it through and 
that does help because my fingers are a little bit fat sometimes and so they won't pull those threads but just by doing that with the awl it just makes seems to make it just so much simpler just to hook that thread underneath so that I can pull it to form the knot. There we go. I'm going to leave those threads long because they're going to be hidden inside the head anyway. And then that's part one of the head. So go ahead and do that with your next ear and I will meet you back here. Okay, so the next thing I want you to do is just once you've done both ears in is put the back of the head together. I've got a few threads, excuse me, just take those off. Um, just make sure you don't pull out your tailor's tags. And then I'm going to then ma match up the neck edge at the back of the head and then follow it all the way around to the ears. Now, if you put the ears to the back, just make sure that you've got the ears about equal further down. Make sure you've not got one really low down and one really high up because that's going to look um, non-symmetrical. And, and whilst nature is non-symmetrical sometimes, then we want our, our bramble to be as symmetrical as possible. So I'm happy with those, so that is good. The next thing you're going to need then is your head gusset piece. Now, I did um, go ahead and do this and then I've deleted too far back on the video. Um, so apologies for that because I have sewn mine together already. But you'll have two little um, triangle shapes cut out of your um, f head gusset piece on the pattern. Like this, those triangles just on the side there. And with the right sides together, you're just going to fold your fabric at those points so that it makes a little seam and then we're just going to we're not sewing it as a dart down to a triangle we're going to just sew the same seam allowance all the way along it so just line your presser foot up with the edge of your um fabric here reverse stitch at the start and the end sew down and then reverse again and what you'll end up with is something that looks like this okay so we can see that that's nice and even seam allowance all the way through there okay and do that onto both sides and that will give you the shaping for the top of Bramble's head. Let me pop that pattern piece out of the way. So the next thing that we're going to do now is you're going to locate the side of Bramble that doesn't have the notch. So you want the side without the notch because that notch is going to be at the nose end. And this one without the notch is going to be down at the neck edge. And if you take one of your pieces, if you always have them so you've got snout together, you can tell that because of your eye placement and now because of your ears. So this is your bottom of your neck here. We're going to take that narrower side and so the side furthest away from the darts and you're just going to match it up at this bottom edge. Now at first I thought that the dart was going to match onto where the ear is but it, I don't believe it does. So just go back to the, go to the other end now and match up your nose edge. So that edge is going to be where the snout goes on and then you're just going to match up the edges of your head gusset onto the edges of your pattern onto your fabric but the don't worry about matching up those seams for the head dart and the reason why I know that's the case is because there's a little clue in the pattern here and if you look on the booklet just here there's a little dart just in there and just in there and that's ahead of where the ear seam is so that's how I've deduced that that's the case. And we're just going to match these up around on one side only. You can only match up really one side, otherwise your pins are going to get in your way when you're trying to sew this from the other side and you'll end up stabbing yourself. So I'm going to sew from the head gusset side because I think I control it better and I think that the head is going to lie flatter that way. So let's go back to our machine again. Make sure our threads are all ready and starting at the neck edge about half a centimeter in just to give us that little bit of a, a go and i'm going to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance again on this so i don't think you can see if i put my hand in the way so i'm just just holding the bulk of the fabric down a couple of stitches forward a couple of stitches back and then i'm going to put the needle in my work just to hold it so that i can be hands free so then i'm going to take my pin out and then I'm going to grab hold of my awl because that does seem to be helping feed the fabric through. And then just keep in the edge of my presser foot. I've still got my needle in position number seven, so it's right across to the right hand side. And that's giving me my quarter of an inch seam allowance. 
and you'll see how easily this fabric is going through. Now, if, you're, if you haven't got a, press, um, a walking foot and you're using your ordinary presser and your fabric starts to bunch, just lift up your presser foot and just let that tension come out from underneath your needle. Then put it down and then start stitching again. Doesn't matter if you're not on a on a pivot point. It just if there's any bunching underneath your needle any time, that's what you need to do. And then just make sure that you've got your your fabric flat for the um for the side of the head against the sewing machine bed as you go. And on this one, you can put some pressure with your left hand and guide the fabric through. So hopefully you can see. So if this is the first time working with really bulky fabric then just take your time because it does does have different properties too if you've been used to using your felt the guide is stopping and stopping often and remembering to breathe as well okay because we tend to hold our breath when we're concentrating don't we so just use your all and just keep everything all nicely neat, neat, neatly lined up into a thick bit so just take your time and to lift the presser foot up I'm just going to ease things around a little bit to make that nice and easy I'm just making sure that I'm pressing my dart open as I get to that bit got a pin hiding in here so let's take that out try not to sew over your pins if you can help it sometimes it's difficult with these thick thicker fabrics and that E is just in that way, so keep that going. Stopping and starting is your friend. And do that as many times as you need, and as slow a speed as you need, just to make sure that you're comfortable with where you're going. I'm trying to keep that shaping in the head as well. I'm just going to finish off at the nose, I'm going to reverse stitch here. out of the work and trim our threads and let's have a look and see how we've done so we want to have a look from both sides because this side if I take those threads off so this side this section here looks quite nice and chunky but if I turn it over we were starting to get a bit close to the edge now we can test that seam by turning it around the right way and just having a little pull but I'm confident that that's been take done, done nicely so that's fine. The head dart's looking a little bit pointy, but I think they'll they'll soften as we stuff the character as well. So now we're going to go to the other side. So let's just put this down on to get our other head. So that's our other head there. And we locate the other side of the gusset, so the side without the ear. And then we're going to put that neck edge down on top of our character here. And this time I will be sewing from the nose edge to the back of the neck so that we keep those directions right. So first time put together your neck edge, two neck edges together and then follow your pattern round. And then we're going to put together, just make sure those um, tailors tacks stay out of the way for you. Just smooth them down. And we're just going to put a pin at the end of the snout. It's not the snout, is it square? Where we're going to be attaching the snout. And then just put your raw edges together without stretching and just put your pins in just to help you locate where you need to be. I've gone back to the neck edge now and put the pins in. And then we're going to sew this exactly the same way. Just tuck that ear in and out the way so that you don't fall foul of that or get that caught in. And this is why I said to you we needed to, when we put that ear in, we put it in halfway down that seam just so that it was out of the way and that's I think that's personal preference but just see how you're doing if you're doing this by hand you've obviously got more maneuverability because you've not got a presser foot to try and get over that bulk but if you're sewing by machine then ideally we we avoid the bulk of the ear so that we don't fix that in okay one more just in there just to hold that together and I think this is why we just do one side at a time because it's just much easier to control all of that Okay, so there we go. Just make sure you've not got any puckers um, folded into your work at all or pinned in because otherwise you will sew it in. And then we're going to work again, this time from the snout or the eye edge 
around and down to the other section. So let me get on and do that and I'll come back to you. Okay, so we've just finished sewing our head side pieces on and now we're going to attach the muzzle. So we're working on the side where you've got your tailor's tacks for your eyes. Hopefully you can see those just there. And when we take the pattern piece off the muzzle, it'll be easy to get it the wrong way round. But when you open it up, we have this big curve around this edge just here. And then here you've got a little indentation. So we're going to take this longer edge around the outside that's not got the indentation. I'm going to flick it round. And first of all, you've got a notch at your centre front. And we're going to match that with the notch at the centre front on the headpiece that we've recently just sewed. Make sure that's in the same place. And I'm going to sew it with the um, muzzle piece down because that means I can control these seam allowances better on the head. So once we've got the pin in the centre there, let's go to one edge first on one, one neck edge. So we've got to see the throat here, this little curve. And we're just going to the edge of this here so that the curve is still staying intact because we'll do that later. Put a pin in. And then I'm going to go to the other edge for again as well. So the same edge on the other side of the head and pin that one. That way then we've got our anchor points as to where we're going. Then what we can do is now adjust this edge here to fit just what's called ease it in. So it looks a little bit longer. So you just stretch your brown fabric just until it reaches the white and then pop your pins in just to hold that together. Just use as many or as few as you feel comfortable with. Just make sure you pin it straight. That one wasn't quite straight. And as you can see, there's a little bit of give in that fabric and you can just smoosh down your fibres on your white fabric and that'll just sit in the middle. So you're looking to try and get it evenly spaced all the way along. And then what we're going to do now is take it to the sewing machine and making sure that our edges are together. And that one wasn't, just slightly. Sometimes they do just need a little bit of a adjustment. And then we're going to sew this on with a one centimetre seam allowance all the way across here. So let's get our machine set up. I've moved my needle so I can use the edge of my presser foot to give me a one centimetre seam allowance. We'll start right on the edge of the brown and we're going to reverse stitch first. That's it. Or a few stitches forward and then reverse, should I say. Needling now works, that holds that down. And then we're just going to adjust, make sure you've got no, nothing. Can you see how this was wanting to fold up underneath? Just make sure you just pull that back, just so that it's nice and straight. You can just follow the edge of the brown then. Apologies for the road noise, but it's a beautiful day here in Spain, so I've got the window open. If it gets too much, I'll close it. But hopefully you can hear me. Stop before you get to your pins. Try not to say over your pins if you can help it. You can see how this is folding up. Just hold that out of the way and just make sure that everything's sitting nicely underneath. Get to your seam allowance, leave your needle in your work, lift up your presser foot and you can just smooth your seam allowances down. Just make sure that's not folded up underneath. And if you need to, you can use your awl as well just to hold fibres down. Just trying to make this as even as possible on both sides of Grumble's head. and our starting threads. So we've got our muzzle sewn on there with a one centimetre seam allowance. 
we can see that our eyes are just there. Now in the instructions, it says to go ahead and put the eyes in, but I'm gonna put my eye, because if you're using safety eyes, then yes, do that, but I'm going to be sewing my eyes on as little buttons, and so therefore I'm going to need um, to put those on. I'm gonna put those on when they're, they're um, stuffed so I can go in through the neck edge. So the next thing that we're going to do, if I follow the instructions correctly, is to turn the head inside out. And then we're going to match up this throat seam just down here and put in a pin. We're then going to go to where the muzzle joins and we're going to open up those seam allowances so we can get that join absolutely perfect just underneath that chin. And a pin in just there. And then we're going to put the edges of the muzzle together as well. Now I am going to change my threads because I don't want to be sewing with a white on the white muzzle with my brown thread. So I'm going to sew this colour here, this bit here in one colour in the brown, and then I'll stop there, reverse stitch and stop, change to my off-white thread, and then I'm going to sew round this section just here. So let's do that. If you're doing yours all the same colour, obviously you don't need to change. And this is also with a one centimetre seam allowance as well, yes. Just check in. In reverse, needle in our work, and our pin out. Make sure your roll edges are together. Just when you're getting up to your seam allowances, just spread those out, make sure those are nice and flat. Quite thick just there. Threads. Okay, so we've just done this bit just around here. The light's fully today because I've got the window open, so I might have to change that if it's a bit too dark for you. So now I'm going to change to my off white my off white thread and then sew round to this point here. So I'm going to come back to you when I'm just going to sew that bit, you don't need to see me change my threads. Okay, so that's the thread change colour. I'm going to take that pin out under the throat because it's being held by the stitches. And I'm going to re-put my, my bramble head underneath and try not to go over onto the white at all with my onto the brown with my white thread. Just make sure you've got your same seam allowance. And then just reverse. And I must say, I do feel that this is one of the easier heads that we have done. So it's a nice, simple sew, this one is. And then reverse at the end. So you've got a nice little flat bit just on the end of Bramble's nose just there. So that should be all okay now. So what we're going to do is, now being careful not to, stick, to stretch your neck too much, put your finger in and reach for an ear. That's probably the best way to get those bits out first. And then you can then just push that all through. It goes through quite nicely. There's plenty of give. Oh, look, I've got a lovely little bramble forming there. So the next thing then is to stuff the head and then to do the nose. Now, I haven't cut out my nose just yet, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. We've got quite a nice join at the bottom just there, and we can fluff the fibres up if it's not quite how we want it to be, just to make sure that's nice. Everything's all nicely sewn. Not got too thick a neck as well with that one centimetre seam allowance. Says, Nice little cute ears and these points here are going to soften out. So let me just go and get my stuff in. My tailor's tacks for my eyes are still in place, so we've still got those. So I'm going to get my stuffing now, start and stuff this. And then when we've got it stuffed, I'm going to sew the nose on and then we're going to put the eyes on and then, then our bramble head will be finished. Okay, so this is my bramble head now, quite firmly full. It has got a bit of a point on the end of the nose there, but I'm going to cover that in a minute with my nose when I cut that out. And so I think that will soften it. Um, I'm just trying to make sure that the head's straight. The ears are looking quite nice and cute. Little thread there. Let's just take that off while we see it. You'll be surprised how difficult these things are sometimes to spot at the end when you're trying to 
quality control and those little head darts have smoothed out and actually are pretty much invisible as well um i've stuffed into the head now i've I, i'm quite happy with how this is looking at the moment it's quite a lot bigger if you look at my hands it's quite a lot bigger than the other character heads um if i just get let's get hamish um yeah hamish is here so if i put hamish next to bramble you can perhaps see the difference in the size there which is quite a quite a bit different um and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm leaving that open because I can adjust that stuffing between now and when we put it on the body. So I do want to ha wait and see how Bramble's body looks in order then just to make sure I've got the ratio right. Quite happy with the cute little sticky out ears. They're very nice. So I saved my nose pattern just here on a pin on my thing. So I'm just going to pop that onto some old some fabric I had left. This is black felt from Otterline. So I can just snip, I did, didn't cut it out before because I knew I would lose it. So let me just snip this out now. I mean, that's always a good thing. If you've got really tiny pieces, just put a pin through it and attach it to your, to your pin cushion. So let's put the nose pattern away. Right, but just make sure your nose is symmetrical because you want that to be looking nice. Okay, happy with that. Tidied it up a little bit. Okay, so the nose is going to be the next thing that we put on and that's going to go over the edge here. It's going to cover the end of that seam and then it's just going to go down to the seam underneath and then we put the strip down underneath. So let's get some black embroidery thread or sewing thread and then we can just quickly do a little buttonhole stitch just to hold that on, which I think would look really nice. So let me get that. Oh, let's put a couple of pins in just to hold it still. Let's, let's get that centre point done at the bottom first. And then we can just pop these in here just to hold it and just to see how that looks. As I say, it's just holding it, covering up that, probably a little bit high actually. And this is where we can adjust and I can tuck the little pointy bit in underneath just to make sure that that's right so I think that's looking better so just adjust just adjust it you know your preference and your personal taste is fine on how these things look sometimes Sarah puts details in the pattern for you then to be aware of but I think that will look about right so it's a bit high. Where's the picture? Let's have a look at our picture. A little bit lower, maybe. Yes, we're going to go with that. Let me find my embroidery floss. Okay, so I've threaded an embroidery needle, or just a decent sized needle, and I've got some of this black thread. This is a DMC thread. It's used elastic band, but it fell off. It's size eight, um, and it's just quilting thread, but it's just it's just nice for using for this type of thing. Nice and strong and nice and thick. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, I've got a um, quilter's knot at the end of my thread, just to put that in. And you can either go up through the head here, or because we've not sewn the nose on yet, I'm just going to take a stitch underneath here. So I'm going to hide the knot underneath, and I'm going to come out on the edge. I'm thinking about how I have to set my stitch up. So coming out on the edge of the black... Um, my pin on the edge of the black felt and then we can just use the end of the needle just to tuck that end in and you won't even see that pins just coming out okay so then we're going to do, I'm going to do a little blanket stitch so to do that you've got to go in so I've got my threads coming out right on the edge of my black um, nose and you're going to not see this very well are you um, but what we do then is we go I'm going to go directly straight down um, horizontally across from there and take a stitch but then I'm going to come out just on the edge just a few millimeters away so the the thread is going to go underneath the needle as I go round if you want to have a look at some um, instructions on YouTube for blanket stitch then that's what I would suggest you have a look at so it just kind of forms a little knot at the top there so keep your thread back out of the way again and then I'm then going to come down again from where I've just come out with the, my thread. And then I travel at an angle behind the black of the nose. 
and then I come up a few millimetres, just a couple of millimetres along. And that just gives it, it gives us a line on the outside, but then a stitch inside the nose. Just trying to get this so that I can get it started. And it's just going to put a nice edge on there, which you probably won't be able to see because it's black on black, which is one of my nemesis. But you're just going to have to trust me that that's what I'm doing. Okay. So let's pop that round. Oops, gone round the pin. So let's move that pin out. So I'm going to move my pin out of the way because now we've got a stuffed head. I don't want any pins to get mixed up with the inside the stuffing and cause a hazard for a child. Okay, so that's going across there. So basically, I'm just going to keep doing these stitches all the way along the edge of this nose. And then one into the corner just to hold that corner steady. Don't want too much of the white because you don't want it to, to be sticking out like whiskers. And that's just holding that nose nice, nice and down. Now there's a little point bits come up, but I'm gonna tuck that behind when I get to that section. So let's turn the corner. I want a couple of stitches on this flat edge. So there's a flat edge on the side of the nose. I've got quite a long piece of thread, but I didn't want to run out halfway through. And just pull that in and it just cinches in. So I'm going to carry on around the head and I'll come back to you when it's not around the head around the nose and I'll come back to you when it's time to cast this off so that you can see how I do that but it's looking nice and neat the way that it's just being stitched in there there's the little bump which will get pushed down behind and I'll show you that when I've finished okay back in a minute okay so I've just gone all the way around the nose and hopefully you think that's looking really quite nice and cute as I say, I've just gone to the very top of that seam for the muzzle and I've tucked the point that I had just below, just below there when I've sewn it and that's made it all come out nice. Now, in order to cast off this thread, so I'm, it, I've just finished my last stitch, so I'm going to go back in on the edge of the muzzle and I'm going to come out here down at the bottom. Now, remember, you've got to do your couple of stitches just be on the point of the nose at the bottom there. I've just probably gone, let me have a look and see, about three quarters of a centimetre um, down. And I'm just going to go down now to just where that point is, where the bottom of the nose is, because that's going to give us a really nice point just to cast these threads off. So I've come down and come out at the bottom of the point I'm going to take just a tiny, tiny stitch just there and go back up onto the edge of the nose again. So I'm taking a bite of the nose underneath and then back in again and out at that point. And what I'm doing is just doing a few stitches backwards and forwards because that gives us a nice long tail that'll hide those that end of that thread. The other thing you can do is come out through the neck edge if you wanted to, but my needle's not really long enough for doing that at the moment. So just doing this just a couple of times, well, I'll probably do it three times actually, but um, two or three times will just give you a nice long edge. Okay, and then that won't pop hook out. So I'm going to go back in again now and I'm going to put a nice long tail on the edge of this and come out through the head. So make sure you know where your, your needle's coming out first before you let go of the other end. Otherwise it disappears inside like that. <laughs> and then pull that thread through and give it a little tug. And then when you snip it off, the end disappears down into inside. So there we go. Nice symmetrical nose. We like a symmetrical nose. And then we've got to choose our eyes. Now where did I put my haberdashery bag? Just in here now if you've got uh, oh crinkle crinkle if you've got eyes that were part of your kit then you'll already know what you're doing with your eyes but i'm going to try a couple on for size because i did have a couple just to see so let me just open my bag up with my got my arm and leg buttons in there so let me just pop those back in because we don't need those just yet because i've got a few different kinds. I've got one with um like this um I don't know if you can see that it's got like a grey mottly kind of effect on it. I thought they could be quite nice, but it might be a bit big. I've got some other ones here which are quite big. What size are these? 
they're one and a half centimetres. And then I've got these little black ones here, which are about five or six mil. I think they're probably going to be my favourite, but let's have a look and see, shall we? So let's just try these mottledy ones. And, and again, your, body, your eyes can change the character. If you're using safety eyes, then that's one way of doing this. Just poking those, sorry, Bramble, but we need to just make sure. They look a bit beady, don't they? A little bit, they don't quite look right. Let's take those off them. I think these ones here are going to be too big. Yeah, they're going to be too big. I'll just put one on because I know that's going to be too big. So that's the butt head of the... Let's put the other one on and I can show you a bit better, can't I? Where's the other pink one? Here it is. But this is where you can just experiment and just have a look and just see what your preference is and... And see, and just see how they old how the eyes do alter the the way that oh, that's not going to stay on broken slightly. So that one is. I'll hold it instead. Oops, <laughs> it's jumping all over the place. So it's still nice, but just just that little bit too big. I, I personally think. So let's keep your fingers crossed. If not, I've got some nice little blue ones, which I thought navy blue might look quite nice against this brown. Let me just try these ones and see how these look. Oops, she's rolling away. You don't like having things poked in your head, do you, Bramble? Sorry. But once we've got it sorted, we can... Oh, they look better, don't they? Not quite in the right place. We need to go back just a little bit, I think. Just from where they... Oh yeah, they look sweet. Oh, pinged, pinged buttons off. And if you've only got one or two, then it can be a bit a bit traumatic. Oh, they look nice, don't they? Don't you think? Nice and cute. So a little bit further back than my um, tailor's tax, but in the right area of vicinity. And just try these blue ones just to see. Sorry if this is a bit boring for you with me, just keep trying these. But I do think sometimes it's nice just to have a little look because these aren't glossy. These are just little blue matte ones. I could put those on with... Well, oh, they're going to be too small, I think. Yeah, they're too tiny, I think, aren't they? So I think it's these ones. So if you've not got a kit, let me just measure the ones I think because that will give you a good idea then when you're looking for yours. I think they're about five or six mil and it's like a, a, a dome button and it's got a shank on the back of it. Hopefully you can see that. Maybe like that might be better so you can see the shank. And then they're just a round glossy top. So let me just get those together. And then we're going to sew those on. I'm going to use the same black thread that I've got already used. Um, you need something really strong because we don't want anything that um, a child's going to be able to pull off. Watch where you put your pins because we need to make sure that that's... So that one's in the right place. That one's where I want them to be. So let me just get a really nice long piece of thread. That's not long enough. I want to be able to go back through these three or four times. And I think I'll probably end up as well. Let's use our doll needle as well. As long as it'll go through our shank on our buttons. So these are the doll needles that I use, hemline ones. And there's three in a packet. So I've got the medium size one, which I think will be fine. Yeah, for going through that shank. Yeah, just make sure before you go to the trouble of threading your needle up do this singly because this is really strong thread as well this is the embroidery thread so it's really strong so let's put a nice big knot at the end here so that's for five or six just so that it catches on the stuffing in the head so nice knot on there and what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to come up through the neck edge first with my needle because that then buries that knot deep inside the head and just keeps that um, nice and secure and we're wanting to come up with the doll needle just behind where we've just got that thread on there so you can be using your tailor's tacks as your rough guide 
So let's just take that out first. And then when we pull it through, I'm just gonna just secure it just until the knot is just inside the head. I'm not pulling it all the way through. It just needs to be secured in there. And then what we can do is take the pin needle out, pin out, and take a stitch through our shank. And then back in again. So if you look where the cross of the eye is, I'm just going just behind that for these buttons. And I'm going to go across and come out just behind where that button is. It takes a few goes just to get it right. So pull that so you've got that one button on. But I'm not pulling it too tight yet. And then just thread your other button on. And then we're going to go back down and through and just check the placement of these eyes and come out where you were stitching your other one. And just check your placement of your eyes to make sure those are where you want them to be. And I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to go through the shank again on this one and then go through and come out on the other one. Because I'm going to cinch these in slightly just because I don't want them to be too easy for a child to be able to poke off. And I will be sending this, um, this one won't be a gift, this one's for me, isn't it? But when I do, I am, will be doing one for a gift for somebody, if I've got in mind. Hello, Daniel. So this one, one will be a gift for Daniel through for my, what is he? If Carolyn's my cousin and it's her child, so... So hello to Carolyn and to Francis. So Carolyn is Daniel's mum. And then Francis is my aunt, who's very lovely. And I've promised a gift to Daniel. He is a little, he's about six months old, so he'll have to wait for it a little while. But hopefully it'll sit on the shelf nicely. So I'm going to go through back again to the other side. But this time, if you noticed, I haven't really cinched this in yet. So now I'm going to give it a bit of a tug, holding on to one button and the other one. And it's just going to tighten up that thread between the two of them because to, up to this point it's been a little bit looser. And I just want to just make sure that thread, those eyes are just poking, it's just going to sit in nicely in there. And they do. Okay. So now, I went through this one, I didn't go through this one. So now you can just press on the head and you'll just expose that shank again if you've got holes you'll just be going through the holes but because these are shanked then it's just a little bit more fiddly just to get behind but bury your stitches behind your buttons and then make sure that thread's fairly straight tight now I'm going through several times as you can tell. I want these to be on really nice and firmly. That's why you need a nice long piece of thread. And the doll needles make this type of attachment really, really easy. Just make sure your threads are going to be hidden by your buttons. And before I cinch these in, where's my quick and pick? Let's just take out those little um, tailor's tacks that we had before because we really don't need those now. I don't want to forget them or leave them buried in there. They definitely just helped with placement. I have just set my eyes back slightly from the muzzle because I think that my, if I'd have used the, exactly where the tailor's tack was, my um, eyes would have been right touching the white of the muzzle and I just wanted them slightly back from that but obviously you can choose because it's personal choice but there there's how our eyes are looking so if you can see there's about just a smidge just between the white and where the black is on both sides eyes look nice and beady which is what we want and then once we're ready and we're happy with those, I'm going to take a stitch in place underneath that eye, this eye just here. So just going in and out under here, which will just give us a couple of stitches just to anchor that thread a little bit. Just right 
underneath where it's going to all be hidden. And then I'm going to take my needle down and I'm going to come out through the neck again. Yep, through the stuffing in the neck. And then once I've done that, give your th threads a little tug just to kind of make sure everything's all nice and where you want it to be. It's looking quite nice, hopefully you agree. And then I'm just going to take a couple of stitches through a big wadge of the stuffing in the head. So this will get buried, buried but when we put the body on anyway. And that will anchor those threads in there just so that they, they're not going to come undone. And then I can just snip that off. Okay. So, we have Bramble's head finished. Looking cute. Okay. So, let me just turn the camera up and we'll wrap up for the head. And then, as you might imagine, I'm going to go straight onto the body. But that will be in a separate video. Hello, everybody. So, just to confirm, this is Bramble's head all nice and finished. Hopefully you approve. I was a bit concerned because on some of them, you, this looks quite a big kind of area and quite protracted. So if you look on this picture here, it looks quite protracted, but on mine, it's not looking so bad. And I do prefer, I'd prefer this way. So I followed all the instructions, so it should be correct um, and should be as Sarah intended. We've got two lovely little beady eyes there. Lovely sewn on black nose with a little bit round there. If it's looking a little bit lopsided, it's because the way I've got it on this little stick just to show you. Of it back here. Lovely cute little ears. And then nice rounded back of the head. So I hope you've enjoyed sewing along with me today. Um, if you've enjoyed this and you want to see the rest, I've got quite a lot of videos coming at the moment. Um, there's, there's a lot of back, backed up videos and kits that I've got to do, and I will be doing those um, over, the, over the coming weeks. So if you want to hit the subscribe button, if you've enjoyed what you've watched, then I'd be really grateful because that's great. And also, if you do click on the notification bell, then you will be told it when I um, upload a new video, and then you can keep along up with those and up to date with everything that's happening. I do dress making videos as well as the lunar lapping videos and also there'll be some more children's clothes coming as well but I just want to sort of get through all of the um, kits that I've got for the lunar lapping because a lot have been sponsored by people and they're waiting so I need to get a wiggle on and get those done but I, hopefully um, everybody's being patient and thank you very much for your patience I do appreciate it. At the end of doing the hair just a quick thank you as well to Eileen Abercrombie to Sharon Warren and to Jan Franklin for their coffee money because that's what I've used to make Bramble today and I just wanted to pop back on again and say a really big thank you to them for, on behalf of me and behalf of everybody who watches this video. Thank you so much ladies. So I'm going to get on now and sew Bramble's body and their limbs so that we can get that video uploaded but yeah I'm liking her so well she's going to be a she for this one. I'm liking her so far um, but as you know it's a unisex um, character so it can be anything. Okay, have a great day everybody and thank you for watching. Bye.